Good morning, and welcome to our time of worship. It's Easter Sunday, 2020, and we gather today separated by the responsibility we have to one another to prevent the spread of a virus that has uh, come amongst us. And so today, as we gather, we need to remember that we do so apart from those we love, apart from this family that we call a congregation, but also our brothers and sisters in Christ. And as we gather today, may we take a moment to remember all of those who are troubled, who are tried, who are afflicted, who are suffering as a result of this pandemic which has come upon us. We begin now and start our time of worship as we light a candle to remember Christ's presence with us. We thank you for this day and for the opportunity that we have to gather together. Be with us now. Teach us, renew us, strengthen us, remind us of your love. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. For our meet and greet time today, I want to ask you again to take a moment to contact those that you normally would have greeted this morning. As we normally walk around our sanctuary, we find people to hug, people to greet, to smile at, to welcome by name. And I pray that you'll take this moment to send a card, send a note, a text or an email, make a phone call. My goodness, yes, we still can do that. Let them know how much you miss seeing them and share the love of God that is coming to your life. May we take a moment. Our lesson today comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew. We are in the 28th chapter, and we're reading verses 1 through 10. Hear these words. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, 
For an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, but has been raised. As he said, Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly, tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. May we pray? Lord, we thank you for this word, your word teaching us, healing us, strengthening us as we go through this life. May it touch our hearts. May it open our eyes, our hearts, and our minds to greater understanding. And I pray, Lord, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts may be acceptable in your sight, O oh, Lord, our strong rock and our redeemer. Amen. Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! This is the traditional greeting of Easter. It is the one that acknowledges a truth that is so profound we could not have believed it if there had not been witnesses. But indeed there were witnesses. And that witness is the truth of our faith. It is that witness that the tomb is empty, that the one who was laid there, the Christ, who crucified, was taken down and laying there, is, is not there any longer. Indeed, he is gone. And the proof of that comes to us through God's holy word. Today, we take this testimony of faith and we proclaim it when we come together. It has been um, a truth of our lives. And so when we come, when we proclaim uh, Christ is risen, we speak something that is so central to the faith of all Christians everywhere that it cannot be denied. And with that, we, we recognize the relationship we have, our sisters and brothers proclaiming it together, then acknowledging that this love, this life that Jesus has given us is indeed the most wonderful thing. It tells us that death is not the end and that no matter how much the world may try to, uh, to uh, misdirect us, may try to put us off course, may try to send us a wrong message, indeed the truth still is the truth. The tomb is empty. Christ is risen. But you know, this, this desire to have uh, a truth in our lives, though, comes even in the midst of so much brokenness. Just because we, the tomb is proclaimed as empty doesn't mean that uh, we don't have times of doubt. We don't have trials that still come our way. We don't have uncertainties. And that's what we're dealing with this day is that there is still so much going on in our lives that uncertainty can try to cloud, to cloud out our, um, our faith. It can seek to make us doubt even the love of God for ourselves. But you know, when we, when we look at it again, well, maybe there's, maybe there's another answer to all the what-ifs of our lives. What-ifs gather upon us, they, they land upon us, they, they make us... Um, question and struggle, they make us wonder, um, indeed, what, what will tomorrow bring? What if I lose my job? What if I don't have enough money for the bills that I've got due? What if I can't pay the rent? What if, what if I come down sick or a loved one that I, that I live with comes down sick? What if death comes knocking at our door and takes one of us before we are, we're ready? What if, what if? What if? 
There's so many uncertainties, and it's easy to be distracted by them into living without hope. When we live without hope, well, we become, we become sad. We're, we're turned inward. We're dejected. We're distressed. We can, we can believe that nothing is secure. We can believe that there's no possibility for, an, for, for getting out of this. And when we, when we lose that kind of hope, we, we tend to fall upon um, uh, very tough times. It's not directed from outside of us so much as it is built up within us. And that's where Jesus gives us an opportunity. And the truth of this day gives us a new way of approaching this life. You see, the truth is, nothing is secure. Change happens. But that, uh, that's a, a reality that we've always had to live with. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary had no reason to expect that there would be anything different that day. When they came to the tomb, they expected that, yes, there would be Roman soldiers, that they would um, maybe give them some some um, resistance to staying and to, to viewing the tomb, but they knew that they needed to be there. They needed to see the place where Jesus had been laid. They needed to grieve. And as such, they came prepared for whatever may come their way. But indeed, they were not prepared for what did come their way. For you see, when they arrived, there was a great earthquake. And a great earthquake preceded the arrival of an angel. And the arrival of an angel was, was that which rolled back the, the stone from the entrance to the tomb, revealing a truth that they could not have imagined. The tomb was empty. And the angel proclaims to them, Behold, he has been raised just as he told you, and he will go before you to Galilee. Go and tell my brothers that I will see them there. Wow. I don't think that anybody would be prepared for that kind of message. If we were to come to the empty tomb today, knowing that Jesus had been laid there just three days before, what would we expect? Would we, would we be as amazed as they were when they found the stone rolled back? When they found an angel perched upon it? Would we be as amazed as they were that the body was gone and that the message was he's been raised from the dead? I believe we would. I believe that when we found that to be the case, we would, we would scream and shout. We would be uh, astounded, running from the place. Oh, and they did run. You see, they ran back to tell the disciples as they had been told to. And when they were running, what did they encounter? They encountered the risen Lord, Jesus, greeting them on the path. Well, they did the thing that we would do. They fell down. They grabbed his feet and held on and worshipped him. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are alive. Wow, you talk about a changed message for Easter. That was it. But here we find them now suddenly given a message. They are to be the ones who carry the truth to the disciples. They are the ones to go back and tell them, indeed, Christ is alive. And he has told us that you must go to Galilee. And there you will see him. Wow. You talk about a change in their lives. Uncertainty was now banished. There was no longer doubt. But now instead there was a truth that they could rely upon. There they could live. When we look at that, well, we understand that this is a truth for our lives as well. Life now looks different. We're no longer pawns of fate. We're no longer um, held in, in darkness. Instead, the resurrection has given us an assurance that we are loved. We are held so close and that we are saved from death. That's the kind of revelation that we want. That's the kind of relief from uncertainty that we strive and cry out for. That the fact of the empty tomb tells us that, that death is not the end. That when Christ was raised from the dead, 
He told us and showed us that not even death is the end for our lives either. Wow. Now that changes the way we live, doesn't it? When it changes the way we live, when it changes what we look forward to, well, now we can live in a different way. Knowing that Jesus is alive, that he's been resurrected, we can, we can see that there's a new way to share this, this new life with others. We don't have to worry that, that death will be a part of life. It is a part of life, and as such, we will pass through it onto a new life. At the same time, we don't have to worry about all the struggles that this world would push upon us. The accumulation of wealth, the accumulation of, of great um, uh, places to live, and, and, and all the things that, uh, that promote the, the uh, understanding of power and of prestige. Instead, when we see that we don't have to worry about these things, now we can live making sure that all have that same gift of God's love for themselves. We can live so that others know that there is peace available to them, that there is joy available to them, that there is new hope available to them. And when we have that, when that comes in and takes over our lives, well, it changes our whole attitude. Now, instead of struggling each day with what uncertainty may come our way, and indeed there is plenty of uncertainty coming our way, when we see this, this coming at us, we look at it and we say, yes, there is uncertainty, but there is certainty in one thing. Christ is alive. And as such, because Christ is alive, we have life. We need not fear that this will be the end of all things. So, when we take that for our life, well, then we can witness to the fact that these, um, this, this great gift of God's love will see us through whatever comes our way. We're struggling now with a coronavirus. It's a pandemic, and we've not had one for a great number of years. Uh, people have pointed to the Spanish flu, called the Spanish flu, even though it didn't come from Spain, um, of 1918. But more recently, though it was not considered a pandemic, but it certainly was one of the more frightening diseases of our time, there was polio. And with polio, there was, there was such, a, such a fear among the people. And it took a great time before people began to move past that fear. It was the development of a vaccine that helped to prevent its spread that began to give people hope again. But the truth was that Christ had been there the whole time. And he walked with those who were struggling. And he talked with those who were crying out for help. And he held them and, and comforted them as they went through that struggle. We need that same kind of comfort today often. And we find it when we turn to our Lord. When prayer becomes our, our, uh, our great outreach, when we, when we say, Lord, come, come and help us, when we lift up prayer and seek that, well, then we are, we are given that comfort and assurance that we so search for. We're given that, that promise that this life is not the end. It is not marked by a death from which no one returns. Instead, it's marked by a new beginning, an opportunity to be what Christ has called us to be. And so this day, as we remember this, this gift of the empty tomb, I hope that we'll take a moment and that we will remember in our hearts, but remember with our lives that death is defeated. We no longer fear. We no longer have to worry. Christ will be with us. And because he lives, we too will live. Uncertainty is still going to try its very best to uh, make us doubt this life, to live as people who have no hope. But the truth is, for all of the uncertainty that this world can give to us, that it can try to force upon us, we live with a certainty that overwhelms it and banishes it every time. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. In the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. sharing in Holy Communion. If you would like to participate, I pray that you have your elements gathered with you. If not, pause this video and then go retrieve them and be prepared then to continue. If you would like to avoid or if you want to bypass this sharing of Holy Communion, then stop the video at this time and we will be with you again next week. So, let us proceed. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. We now move to our time of the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. 
When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead, and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. On the day he was raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them to be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now may we be so bold as to pray the prayer which he taught his disciples, saying, Our, Our Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one people, for we all participate in the one loaf. The sharing in the bread is the sharing in the body of Christ. The sharing in the Jews is the sharing in the blood of Christ. My precious Lynn, did the body of Christ broken for you. Thanks be to God. And the blood of Christ poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. My precious Braxton, the body of our Lord broken for you. Amen. And the blood of our Lord shed for you. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your Spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now be strong, be courageous, be steadfast in your faith, and let all that you do be done in love. Amen. Amen.